Hey guys, Katie from the K Show blog here, and I'm bringing you another vlog from the hotel room. And I just wanted to talk about some tips for traveling with pets. So, obviously, we moved here with our dog Coco Chanel. Uh, we moved with two dogs over to Italy and then traveled with them around there. And I just wanted to share some of the things that, like, I've been finding have been helpful so that hopefully they can help you too. Kind of uh, an informal vlog today. So, the first one is basically do your research before you do anything and learn whatever rules you might need to be following uh, so there's sort of different types of travel that that we've done so some of the sometimes it's been getting on a plane and like flying somewhere with uh, dogs i've only traveled with dogs really i haven't really done cats but uh, you know you might need to adapt this a little if you have cats but uh, so the first type is flying on a plane and then the second type is sort of getting everyone in the car and just going for a road trip somewhere. So it's sort of two different ones. But it doesn't matter which one you choose for that. You should definitely do a little bit of research first before you go and just figure out what rules you might need to follow. So for flying, it's usually uh, if you're taking them in the cabin with you, there's always rules around what size carrier they need to be in based on what size dog they are. Usually they need to be able to like stand and turn around. So there's different sizes they accept. Um, so check that. I've done flights with dog. Nobody's ever like checked the size of the carrier, but it is technically in their rules. So like I would just follow the rules and not play with that, uh, the role in that dice of like getting rejected at the airport or something like that. So I would just follow the rules. I mean, I'll get into this in a minute, but yeah, first I would just figure out what size carrier you need and any requirements around that. If they're going underneath in the plane and not sitting with you, um, maybe just figure out what size crate they need and any vaccinations or all, all the things like that. You just want to figure out what rules there are to get them on the plane. So it's carrier vaccinations, uh, anything specific to breed. Sometimes when they have the the short, is that a snout? You know, the breathing, <laughs> like the short snout, uh, the smush face. Uh, there's different rules that, you know, they're not always accepted. Different breeds are not always accepted. So just check that. And that's probably about it. Now, even if you're doing a road trip though, you still wanna do your research and check your rules. So uh, where you're staying, if there's any rules about having them at the hotel, sometimes you have to wear a muzzle uh, when you're in the shared areas, uh, things like that. Uh, what you might need to bring in terms of like paperwork for them and showing vaccinations. I know in Europe we had the, the pet passport, which had all the vaccinations listed. So you just want to figure out what you need. Uh, and in terms of driving, some countries have laws of how the dog has to be restrained. So do your research first. I know that's a long ramble on one thing, but uh, the main thing is prepare pay yourself it makes everything easier if you've just done your research before you even get started on the travel so now that you know what you need and you've got organized you can buy your stuff get your carrier early don't leave that one till the last minute if you haven't already got one like if you have to buy one get it early this is the one I use I used the same one I bought one a few years ago to move to Italy and then you know use that and it got all old so then i bought another one of the exact same to come back and this is a sherpa brand i'll leave a link below for it um but it fit all the requirements and had like a guaranteed onboard sticker so um it's been a lifesaver like i love this actually because it's so comfortable i think they're about 50 dollars but aside from like following all the rules and, and fitting on a plane uh, the strap, it's just really comfortable to carry her. I usually go like across and have her sort of on the back of my hip or sometimes on one side. But there's a lot of room for a small dog. I think I got the medium size because that's what, uh, for her height, like that's the one she needed. And it has this top, it has a front opening and then a top opening. So sometimes I can like pop her head out the top just to pat her. So I like that part as well. But it's great quality, like the other ones lasted me about four years, so they're really great quality. And then it has a back zipper, which I use to keep a couple of spare puppy pads. And you're going to want that for the travel day, just in case there's a, a toilet emergency. We definitely had that with Coco in the airport in front of everyone. So the, this back pocket, uh, I usually just keep a couple of puppy pads in there. And then what you do, once you get your carrier, you just want to leave it out. Like you want your dog, especially if they're kind of a nervous dog. Um, I found it really helpful. I just had read this on the internet, like I didn't invent it, but um, just leave the carrier out around the house. I think I put like an old t-shirt or a little blanket or something like a toy, just left the front door open so she could walk right in. 
And so we did this before we moved to Italy. I had two dogs, so two carriers, left them open, and just didn't bring any attention to it. You know, I just didn't, you know, try and force them in or anything. And so they just got curious on their own. They could smell what was in there, and they just naturally went in. And then like after a couple of days or something, they would just be sleeping in the carrier and on their own, like they would just walk in and that was their place to sleep. Uh, Cause these Sherpa ones also, they have, let's see if I can show you. There's a removable bottom layer that's really soft and fluffy. Boop, 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 boop. Stand by. <laughs> But it's like this and it's really soft and fluffy. So it was like a little sheltered bed for them. But basically you don't want to do any like try to force them in there or associate that carrier with punishment in any way or negativity in any way uh, because it's going to make that travel day so much easier if they already view that as like a comfy safe place to sleep. So that was one thing that I think has helped a lot is that just leaving it out and doing that and letting them like it on their own uh, then on the travel day when they get stuck in it for ages they would just sort of chill you know they just lay down and sleep and they're, they're used to it and they know it's a safe place so that's one thing that really helped for me and if I had any advice that's probably the biggest one it doesn't have to be that brand of carrier but whatever one you do get them used to it early maybe leave some treats just really associate that with a positive memory and for the travel day itself uh, if you're flying you might need to, I would suggest like seeing a vet first before you do any flying and get their opinion because they can actually see the dog and give you specific advice. Uh, that's what our did, vet did for us. Um, but then just follow whatever rules that airline has for flying. And the sort of general rules for most dogs is like you don't feed them a big meal before you get on the plane because it's just more to get upset and vomit up really. You don't want them sitting in their own vomit. Um, just give them a little bit of water, you can take snacks. If they're gonna be in cabin with you, just have some snacks, like a little bit at a time, just so they don't have that one big meal like they might have at home. If they're going underneath the, the plane, um, maybe just don't leave anything that they could hurt themselves on or choke on, like different toys, things like that. Like, I think you're gonna get that specific advice from the airline and a vet, so like, don't get that from me. <laughs> Follow whatever suggestions there are and like, take the guidance from those experts. If you do have your dog with you for the travel itself, if you have any layovers like definitely get them out of the carrier if it's allowed at the airport uh, but it is at most places and, and just walk them around like walk them as much as possible get some energy out and uh, try and let them use the toilet that's why having that puppy pad in the back of that carrier uh, sometimes I'll just put that down if um, you know I'm trying to encourage her to go give her a moment to do that smell you know have a little drink of water just let them get out as much as possible because then they're stuck in the carrier for however many hours afterwards. And check out your airports before you have your travel day itself. Just do a quick Google and find out if those airports have either pet relief areas or um, service dog or service animal relief areas, anything like that. Because those things are such a lifesaver during travel because you can just walk in to these like tiny little rooms right but they usually have like fake grass a fake fire hydrant and just some areas for the dogs to like walk around and go to the toilet and they're just such a lifesaver you know so you don't have to like be sitting by a gate just with a puppy pad out <laughs> they can just walk around and sniff and uh, those things like I'm so glad they exist so definitely do a google and then if you have time at the layover go to the pet relief area and your, your dog will love it. If you're driving, then it's really just getting to the place, right? You're gonna stop probably for your own uh, rest breaks and snack breaks or whatever. So then you just walk them outside and you know, maybe there's a bit of grass or something to walk them. That's pretty self-explanatory. I don't think that needs any big tips from me, but that's about it for like the traveling itself. Now, another thing I would highly recommend you get, especially if you like being organized with your stuff, which I do, is I found this on Amazon. Try and get it all in. And it's just a pet travel bag. It was only about $35. And I put it off for so long, because I was like, oh, $35, that's so much. But I wish I had got it sooner, because it just, it just helps me like streamline and be organized, which I really like. So it comes with the bag, two of these bowls, collapsible bowls. Now, I will say these are like pretty dodgy quality and Chanel like ripped one of those soon after we got it because uh, they're, they're pretty flimsy plastic. But in saying that, like you don't get the value of this bag from the bowls because you can take whatever bowls you have at home. The value comes in, you know, having a, a cool travel bag that's like trendy and cute, but also like organizes all your stuff. 
So I'll show you what I usually bring with Chanel. So she has a water bottle. This is like just a generic one I got at a pet store. It's nothing special, but it just squeezes out into a little drinking bowl for her. I got this from Ikea. I just thought it was cute. It's actually a kid's lunchbox, but I put like uh, some extra treats or snacks. So you can often find her actually running around the house with this because she knows that's like where the good stuff is. But those separate, like I didn't, they didn't come with the bag, right? And then these come with the bag. These, you get two of these containers and you can use them for like dog food. I filled ours with uh, bags of dog food, like Ziploc bags and put it in here. So they were great, but it just helps you keep everything separate and organized. So there's two of those. And then I also just pack a thunder jacket. If you have a dog with anxiety, for us, like the thunder jacket doesn't solve the problem, but it helps a little, you know, so every little bit helps, I'll take it, but it's the way people said it solved it, that didn't happen for us. Um, she still will yap and bark if, if we leave her alone too long, but it, it definitely helps. And then you also have a partition, so if you want to separate things even further, you can do it with this. There's a bit of Velcro on the inside, but I really don't use it. I just sort of shove everything in. But so convenient just to keep everything organized. I used to just have like some Tupperware containers. I'd be putting it in my backpack and whatever. And now just having her own stuff. It's so handy. And then this front part. So I'm trying to like show you all this um, by holding it up. But this just comes out flat. So you put this on the ground and then you can put the bowls here. And so even if you're on the go, you can just zip this, zip this down. And you can keep the bowls in here so you can take them straight out water, food, you know, it's a nice little clean area for your dog to eat off and then zip it back up. Like, so convenient. I'm so glad I got this, so I definitely recommend it. I'll find a link for this one and add it below as well, but it was like $35 on Amazon and well worth it. And I also keep extra puppy pads in the top because, I mean, I, tr I use the reusable ones at home, but for travel, they're just not as convenient. So don't always like get to wash them properly anyway and uh, then I don't want like stinky wet puppy pads in you know if you're stuck in the car for a road trip or something so like I try to just use the um, re uh, what are they called disposable ones for traveling because they're just so much more convenient and then the reusable ones at home so now for dogs with anxiety I mentioned like our dog does have a lot of anxiety and honestly it's been like it's been like years of, of trying to help her with this. Um, but for her, it's usually like if she's not with us, like we can't like leave her in the hotel room and just leave. She's not as confident on her own. So like I said, this thunder jacket, it's kind of like a weighted blanket that some people have, like it's that. It does help a little and it does calm her down a, a little bit. So that's helped. Other things that have helped, uh, honestly, just practice. Um, just trying to practice it's hard because it's not something we can train at home because she's so like comfortable I can leave her as much as I want when she's in the house you know what I mean but in the hotel room when it's all new she is not confident she loses all her confidence and just gets like yappy and starts destroying things so it's hard to train her at home but the more we've taken her on trips and just exposed her to this little by little um, she's definitely getting a lot better so it's been a practice thing I guess at home we could sort of go to friend's house and take her or something like that. Um, so that might be an option for you. Um, but sometimes, so like every trip we'll make a point to like both <coughs> um, myself and my husband, like leave the room and just step outside for a little and then come back and like, it might be like 30 seconds. We started with like 30 seconds. Go out, come back. And the things I read were just to come back before she starts barking so she can be, re be rewarded for being quiet, like give her a treat, then go out again. So, you know, we've been doing things like that for ages now and it, it, it is all helping, you know, she is getting better. But that's just been a training and, and practice thing. There wasn't a quick fix. And another thing that helps is taking her for a walk or a run early in the morning and then she's like just gets out a lot of that energy. I think she's too tired to be yappy or too tired to be anxious. So that's been helping. I've been like taking her for a run um, in the mornings every day <laughs> and uh, that's something that helps as well. So now if we travel with her, I would probably start implementing that, like go for a big walk or a big run in the morning, like 30 minutes is big for her. And then um, she'll be a bit more calm and tired during the day. So those are a couple of things. I don't really do medication with her. Um, I just try and avoid uh, medicating the dogs too much or dog too much but 
those things have definitely helped. So we have the familiar things from home as well, like blankets, toys, favorite toys, all that. And then training, and then uh, the thunder jacket. That's the best tips I have for you around that. But maybe if you have more, like definitely pop it in the comments. If you have any more tips for like traveling with dogs or cats or pets or whatever, just pop it in the comments. And especially if you have any for anxiety, you know, dogs with anxiety or pets with anxiety. Yeah, absolutely. Leave them and uh, maybe we can all learn from each other too. But that's about it. That's all my tips for today. And uh, I hope they help. I hope if you are like traveling with your pets, these will help. And otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye.